Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 28th of September. 21st century belongs to India, says Modi in his address to expats in US. India launches country's first multi-wavelength space observatory. And Afghan Taliban takes control of parts of northern Kunduz. And now for all the details. The 21st century belongs to Asia and particularly India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said while addressing the Indian community in the US. A report. The Indian Prime Minister, who is in New York, has scheduled meetings with U.S. President Barack Obama, French President Francis Hollande and British Prime Minister David Cameron on Monday. Prime Minister Modi reached New York after completing his tour to San Francisco, where he addressed the gathering of some 18,000 strong Indian community in the SAP Center in San Jose. The Indian Prime Minister, who began his speech by paying tribute to freedom fighter Bhagat Singh on his 108th birth anniversary, also lauded the contributions of the expat community in the U.S. पिछले कुछ समय से अब लोग ये नहीं कहते हैं कि 21वीं सदी एशिया की सदी है अब लोग कह रहे हैं 21वीं सदी 21वीं सदी 21वीं सदी हिंदुस्तान की सदी है ये आज दुनिया मानने लग गई है Prime Minister Modi spoke about the potential of India with its huge youth population. In his address, he also spoke about the major challenges being faced by the world, including the threat of terrorism and global warming, and called for a collective action. Many said his speech was inspiring. Modi ji ne apne bhashan mein Veer Bhagat Singh ji ka naam liya. Wo ham logon ko bahut hi acha laga aur. यहाँ पे जो राष्ट्रगीत हम सब ने एक साथ में बोला उसमें सबके मन में इतने दूर यूएस में रह के भी देशभक्ति की भावना बहुत बहुत प्रज्वलित हुई द इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर विल कम्प्लीट हिज एंगेजमेंट लेटर इन द डे विद सीरीज ऑफ बायोलैट्रल मीटिंग्स विल रिटर्न टू न्यू डेली ऑन ट्यूजडे Indian government's ambitious project Digital India which aims at increasing the internet penetration in the country has received support from global tech giants this follows after Indian prime minister Narendra Modi met top tech company heads in the US during his visit Search engine giant Google will set up base for free Wi-Fi at 500 railway stations while Microsoft will take low cost broadband technology to some 500000 villages across India the promises were made during Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the Silicon Valley. On Sunday, he also visited the headquarters of Facebook in California and attended a town hall event along with Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Modi said his target was to make India a $20 trillion economy and to achieve that the country was focusing on three areas – agriculture, services and manufacturing. He also stressed on the importance of social media in the society. आज सोशल मीडिया की ताकत है कि किसी भी सरकार को वो गलत करता है तो रोकता है गलत करने से डरता है और गलती सुधारने का अवसर पहले पांच साल में एक बार चुनाव के बाद होता था आज हर पांच मिनट के बाद होता है Lauding the Digital India Initiative, Zuckerberg expressed his desire to be a part of it. So I'm deeply appreciative of Prime Minister Modi's <coughs> commitment to Digital India to make this enormous opportunity a reality for all Indians. And I'm personally also impressed uh, by the example Prime Minister Modi has set of using the internet and social media to communicate directly with Indian citizens. Earlier, the Prime Minister visited the campuses of Google, Microsoft, Apple and Tesla. He also attended the India US Startup Connect 2015 where he urged startups to invest in India. 
The Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, on Monday successfully launched AstroSat satellite from Satish Dhawan Space Center in India's southern Sriharikota. This has put India in the elite club of countries who have their own space observatory satellite. The performance of the PSLV C-30 has been excellent and it has successfully put AstroSat satellite into the orbit, said the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO. The PSLV C-30 rocket is carrying India's AstroSat along with six foreign satellites. The AstroSat will be used to observe celestial objects by performing observations in ultraviolet, optical, low and high energy X-ray wave bands. It has an expected operating lifetime of five years. Just now we completed the PSLV C-30 AstroSat mission and uh, everything went on well with the mission and we are used to the extended version of PSLV vehicle we call as PSLV XL vehicle for this mission and the performance of the vehicle has been excellent and uh, in fact it has performed as we wanted. The Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope, or UVIT, which is one among the five payloads in AstroSat, is being seen as India's version of the Hubble Telescope. The latest success of the ISRO comes days after its Mars orbiter spacecraft Mangalyaan successfully completed one year of its mission life around the red planet observing its atmosphere. Meanwhile, in Nepal, protests against the adoption of the new constitution are refusing to die down. The country has imposed restrictions on vehicle use amid reports about limited supplies of fuel in the wake of blockage by the minority Madhesi community along the Indo-Nepal border. Nepal government has enforced an odd-even license plate system for plying of vehicles on alternate days as fuel stock is running low. The fuel crisis follows the unrest along the Indo-Nepal border over the adoption of the new constitution. The Madheshi protesters have blocked the Birgun Strait checkpoint, obstructing the passage of goods and fuels laden trucks from India. Many also burnt effigies of Nepal government in Gorakhpur district of India's northern Uttar Pradesh, which lies along the border between the two countries. Nepal adopted the new constitution on 20th September to bring political stability in the country. However, some ethnic and religious groups have alleged that lawmakers ignored their concern while reshaping new borders. They fear new federal structure will marginalize them. At least 40 people, mostly protesters, have been killed in violent clashes since August. Moving on to news from Afghanistan, at least 21 people were killed and over 50 others injured in a Taliban raid in northern Afghanistan in the early hours of Monday. The incident happened in Kunduz, some 208 miles north of capital Kabul. Hundreds of Taliban fighters who stormed the city from three directions have also taken control of many key areas of the region. The Afghan army has launched a counter-attack to recapture the city. Kunduz has for long remained a stronghold of the Taliban insurgents who have been gaining ground across the country post the NATO troops withdrawal. The provincial government in Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan will soon begin talks with nationalist leaders to end the long-standing insurgency, Chief Minister Abdul Malik Baloch has said. But it is not yet clear whether the government has sent any invite to the nationalist leaders. All efforts are being made by the government to persuade exiled Baloch nationalist leaders to return home and join the peace process. Chief Minister Abdul Malik Baloch said he hoped to meet separatist leaders soon to find a solution to restore peace in the region. He also claimed that the patriarch of the erstwhile Kalath royal family, Mir Suleiman Daud and Baloch Republican Party chief, Brahamdak Bukti, had expressed willingness to hold talks with the government. But it remains to be seen what the government has to offer to nationalist leaders. Because nationalist leaders, including Bukti, have made it clear that they won't compromise on complete independence, a demand that has been rejected by the government. Mineral-rich Balochistan, which is geographically the largest province, has been roiled by a decades-old insurgency by the ethnic Baloch people. They claim that their homeland was illegally annexed by Pakistan in 1948. The Baloch, who have never accepted being part of Pakistan, have for long accused successive governments in Pakistan of exploiting the rich natural resources of the region without providing due royalty. 
The voice against Pakistan's continued interference in Afghanistan is getting shriller by the day. Afghans living in the UK held a demonstration in London to bring international attention to the issue. A report. Afghan nationals and activists have alleged that Pakistan has resorted to supporting terrorist groups like the Taliban and the Haqqani network to economically and politically destabilize Afghanistan. Calling for an end to its interference, scores of Afghans recently protested outside Pakistan High Commission in London to denounce the acts of terrorism and killings by these groups. We therefore demand from the state of Pakistan to immediately stop its aggression, killing and destruction in Afghanistan. We demand from the official in the state of Pakistan to stop supporting terrorist groups and close down the training camps for suicide squads and end political activities and gathering of Taliban inside Pakistan. Pakistan maintains that it wants peace and stability in Afghanistan, but successive governments in Kabul have accused Islamabad of sheltering terrorist groups inside Pakistan who are responsible for large-scale violence in the country. The U.S. had also recently stated that Pakistan had failed to take a strong action against the Haqqani network despite its claims. The demonstrators who appealed to the UN and other international organizations to take note of the situation also submitted a memorandum to Pakistan High Commission. Aqani's uh, Al-Qaeda and other big terrorist groups are uh, doing their activities from uh, Pakistan. These are all uh, clear uh, evidence against Pakistan that we gather today here to condemn it and uh, we want Pakistan to uh, stop interference in, uh, in Afghanistan. Pakistan was one of the only few countries which had recognized the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. A number of Taliban top commanders are still believed to be hiding in various parts of Pakistan. Recently, it was also revealed that former Supreme Commander of the Afghan Taliban, Mullah Omar, died in Pakistan, where he was hiding for last many years. Moving on to another neighboring country, Maldives President Yamin Abdul Gayoom escaped unhurt from an explosion on his speedboat as it approached Mali. He was returning home after performing a Hajj pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. Gayoom's wife, Fatimat Ibrahim, and two aides suffered minor injuries, Cabinet Minister Mohammad Sharif said. The cause of the blast that happened in the engine room is not known yet. The minister also added that an assassination bid has not been ruled out. Police is investigating the incident. Of late, Maldives has been witnessing political turmoil following a disputed election. But it is not known for serious political violence. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. 21st century belongs to India, says Modi in his address to expats in the US. India launches country's first multi-wavelength space observatory. An Afghan Taliban takes control of parts of northern Kunduz. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.